Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, March 26th, and I don't even know where to start with this video. I have been MIA for quite a while. I haven't filmed a video in probably four months or so, and I thought it was finally time. Finally time to update you guys. I have a big, exciting announcement. I have some bittersweet kind of news. I have some finished objects. I have a little bit of haul and a little bit of just personal stuff. There's been a lot going on. So let's jump right into it. First off, if you follow me on social media, you might already know this, but I am pregnant and I'm super excited. My husband's excited. My entire family is just beyond excited. This is our first and I will be 21 weeks tomorrow. So more than halfway there. It is a little boy and we named him Milo Julian Gonzalez. So I'm really excited about that. I, I love his name. And he is due at the beginning of August. And I just, I'm still like in disbelief. Like it's been a long journey to get here. Um, but I'm really excited. So with that, the pregnancy portion of it, I will talk more about it toward the end because not everybody is going to want to hear all about the pregnancy and the symptoms and all of that that goes along with it. But I will say along with the pregnancy comes a little bit of bittersweet news because if you've noticed over on Spectacular Yarn's Instagram page, I have not posted in a while. And that is because I have not dyed yarn in a while. Why? Because I do not feel comfortable using the acid dyes and exposing myself to those chemicals while pregnant. Um, I do wear a mask and it does help, but I still dye yarn in an enclosed environment. I dye it indoors. I don't have anything else available to me at the moment. And there's always like lingering fumes after the fact. There's no real ventilation. I usually die in the kitchen. And I just don't feel comfortable exposing myself and the baby to those chemicals. So as of now, I have not been dying yarn. I will very likely, it's kind of on hiatus and I don't know if it's indefinite. I don't want to expose the baby to that when he's born either. So as of now, it's just kind of on hiatus. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. I do know that I love the knitting community. I love yarn. I love knitting. That has not changed. So what I think is going to happen is my business is kind of going to convert into my um, knitting project bags because I love sewing. I love making project bags. If you're not familiar, I'll pull one up right now. This is our small size drawstring bag and these are great and you guys seem to love these and I want to still be part of this community and I want to still do what I love and just do it at my own time and not put so much pressure on myself. So I do have a lot of bags ready to go, ready to like um, sew up, like I've already cut everything out. Um, when will I get to that? I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot happening, which I will talk about more at the end of the video. But as of now, that's what's going on with the business. So excited that I'm pregnant, bittersweet about the business, but things happen for a reason. And the health of my baby is obviously more important. And I just feel comfortable not dying yarn at the moment. So I'm sure everybody understands. But I am really excited to share with you some finished objects that I have because I have been making some stuff for the baby and I wasn't able to really share it with you guys. Now, I will say that my energy so far, especially in the first trimester, was just non-existent. I feel like I was surviving and doing the bare minimum. So I really wasn't knitting. I wasn't crafting much. I was literally barely getting any work done. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a decal business. That is my priority. That is my baby. Like that is my, my main source of income. And so that has always been priority. And I was doing the bare minimum. I was literally just trying to get orders out on time. So now that it's the second trimester, I feel like I have a little bit more energy. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of breath. Okay, so before I get into finished objects, I quickly wanted to share some shop news. So my husband and I will be moving soon. I'm not entirely sure like where or when because 
it's all kind of up in the air. It's military. We're waiting for paperwork. There's a lot going on. However, I have slowly started like clearing stuff up and packing. There's a lot of boxes in this um, room right now. And along with that is yarn inventory. And I would really hate for all the yarn to sit in boxes for months in storage. So I would much rather put out a sale for you guys and try to get inventory out to you guys so that I don't have to have the yarn just sitting around and not being used. So with that said, please be sure to follow me on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, and I will be posting the sale very likely in a few days within the week for sure. So be sure to follow me there if you want to get your hands on some of the inventory that's currently in the shop. And if you want to check out what we have now, I will link the um, Spectacular Yarns website down below. So let's get into finished objects. The first thing I wanted to share, and I have shared this before, but I wanted to share it again because the last, I believe in my last podcast, I shared it, but I had mentioned that this was for my niece, but it was actually, that was a lie. It's actually for my son. And I'm just, I'm so excited I could actually share that now and I don't have to be hiding stuff. But let me pull up the pattern in case you did not watch the last podcast. But this is the Dog Star Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And the kind of like the gray neutral color is Sofiak DK by Rowan. And then this like mint color work here is by Sublime Yarns. It is a baby cashmere merino silk DK. And the colorway for the gray here is seagrass 249 and then the mint is herb 628 and like always i will have my project page linked down below for ravelry so you could go ahead and find the pattern find the yarn that i use the size that i made all of that information will be down below but along with this is this little beanie that i made and this one let me see here Okay, here it is. This is called the Basic Hats for Everyone pattern by Pearl Soho. It's just a very basic little beanie and I had leftover yarn so I thought it was perfect. And I did make a pom-pom. I just haven't attached it yet because I need to... It's the first pom-pom I've ever made and I use a pom-pom maker that I shared last time but I think I already packed it away. Um, I need to kind of trim it and fix it up a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and attach it here and the only reason I haven't done it is because I'm honestly not sure like if I attach this can I wash this like can I throw this in the washer after I'm not entirely sure this this yarn is washable um that's why I used it because babies are babies and I just want to be able to throw this in the wash and not have to worry about it um so if I attach this, am I able to throw this in the wash or will the pom-pom get messed up? And if so, if that is the case, then I have to figure out how to attach this to where I can easily remove it when I wash it. So if you guys have any tips, let me know, please. So that is his first little outfit. And just like a quick backstory to this, the day that I found out that I was pregnant was... Hold on. Hello? Okay, so where was I? Um, so the day that I found out I was pregnant was actually the day that my husband and I had a flight. We were going to catch a flight to Maryland. We live in Colorado. We were going to catch a flight to Maryland to go visit my sister for... I feel like they were the holidays? Maybe like Thanksgiving? Kind of like the week before Thanksgiving, perhaps? Um, so we were out there in Maryland and that same week there's a yarn a yarn store that I wanted to go visit again I had been there last time and I decided that I wanted to buy some yarn specifically for a project for the baby and so um, I chose this color here and I, I don't even think I knew what I was going to make at the time to be honest like I'm not entirely sure I knew um, but I ended up getting this yarn here and then my husband chose like this mint color. I wanted us to each choose a yarn. So that's kind of like a special memory for us. And 
I love the way it came out. At first I was hesitant because the mint is just so close in color. There's not like a huge contrast, but I'm glad that he chose it. I think it looks so good and just subtle. Oh, and by the way, this is the first time I did color work, like actual color work. I think it came out pretty good. So that is the story behind his little first outfit. So the next item that I finished is this cute little beanie for the baby. And this is the garter ear flap hat by Pearl Soho. And I love this color. It's super cute. It is by Yarn Bee, I believe, from Hobby Lobby. Let me see. Yes. And it is the Tweed Indeed. And the color is Ocean Tweed. And... You could probably see the tweed a little bit better in here. Just like colorful speckles of, or colorful bits of tweed. And I really like the color. I love how this came out. It just came out bigger than I anticipated, which doesn't surprise me because my gauge is so loose and it's actually pretty annoying. Um, I made the smallest size and it looked too big. So I took it to my sister's house recently just to try it on my niece for reference and sure enough this fits my niece like perfectly and she's eight months old and I was expecting this to fit my son around three months of age but that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. So I have to make a smaller one which honestly isn't a problem like I'm actually excited to cast it on soon because this is such a fun quick project. I love the way it came out. And it was definitely a new technique for me. Um, like the, the ear flaps were just like short rows, but the way that it kind of came together, it was new to me and I really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing that's not the most fun is purling every other row, but it was fine. So for reference, let me see. This pattern calls for a US 7 and 8. I used a US 4 and 6 and it still came out way too big and I made the smallest size available. So this is the issue that I always have and this is why I struggle even more so with like fingering weight because I always have to go down multiple needle sizes to even come close to a gauge. So that's irritating but I do plan on casting on another one as soon as possible. I just have to figure out if I want to do the math and go down, um, like make my own size and go down a size. Or if I just want to use even smaller needles, I have to kind of figure out what I want to do and what yarn I want to use. Um, because I want to make another one, just not the same exact color. So highly recommend this pattern though. I love it it fit my niece so cute and I highly recommend it okay so I have I have a half finished object and it's a sock let me see I've been working I feel like I've been working on this forever but I finally finished one so these are the I believe it's called the shorty sock let me see here it's called the Shorty Sock by Summer Lee Designs, and it's just a shorty. I'm using self-striping yarn, and what I like about this sock is that the, like the inset, instep, is that what it's called? Like the arch of your foot has this ribbing, which hugs your foot so nicely, I love it. Um, so the yarn that I'm using for this see here uh, this is by rock and string creations in the color southern nights and this is what it looks like i love it it's so pretty so i got the one finished and oh i'm further than i thought on the second one i had no way i should just finish this um so here's the second sock it looks like i'm already close to finishing the foot and going into the heel so i i'll probably work on this soon and just get it done and off the needles um because i do love these colors so much and i would love to wear this soon 
Um, by the way, the contrast yellow color is just some scrap yarn that I had laying around, so I'm not even sure what it is to be honest but i i thought they worked well together like the co the colors complemented each other well so there's that and then i have a new cast on it i cast it on like a few months ago and then i didn't get very far but i'm still gonna share it with you guys so this is the citadel by hohi locatelli it's just a black and white um, picture I have here this has been on my queue for a while I've been wanting to make this for a while I was trying to figure out what yarn I wanted it was planned for quite some time and I was excited to finally cast it on and I cast it on I'm loving the cables it is definitely challenging for me I'm just not used to so many different how do I explain it without showing the pattern um, the way that it's written out is genius but I just I'm not familiar with the way it's written out um, like it took me a while to finally understand like how she was writing out the pattern but once I figured it out it's so easy it's just a matter of keeping track of every single row that you're on because there's for example there's the ladder stitch the left cord the right cord the v cable the left cable the right cable and within these cables and these cords there's different amounts of rows on each one so you could be on row two for the ladder stitch but then you could be on row eight for the v cable for example and and, and so it's kind of it's easy once you get it, but you have to make sure that you track exactly where you're at. And that was the challenging part for me. But I use, without showing like the pattern too much, I use the highlighter tape and I just move it every single time. And it works very well for me. So that's what I've been doing. I even put in a lifeline and I'm writing out the, the number of rows that I'm on in case one of the like highlighter tapes come off and it's been very enjoyable the construction is definitely new to me as well i i started and i was like i don't understand what this is like what am i even doing so i had to go onto the project page and look through the project notes and everything to kind of figure out oh that makes sense like that's what i'm doing because i was like is this supposed to be like the entire back like what is this supposed to be and honestly it's been a few months i don't even <laughs> i don't even remember the construction now um, but I'm sure once I look it up again, it'll, you know, it'll come to me again, but it was definitely a different cast on as well. I've learned a lot so far. And then somehow my wrist started hurting. My left wrist started hurting so bad. I've never had so much wrist pain before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I honestly, I'm not sure why it happened. It, it's just very strange. I was knitting on this um, a good amount. I don't think that this was the cause, but part of me is kind of scared to work on this again because I don't want my wrist to hurt again. I, I'm not sure. I doubt that it was this because I've had times where I knit so much and I do get a little bit of wrist pain, but this was unbearable. Like I had to go to the hospital and urgent care. I had to get like a mold put on like it was a whole situation I was pretty much like not able to use my hand for a few weeks it was it was really bad so I have not picked this up in months and I want to really bad because I love it so maybe I'll do it soon I'm just scared I'll just take it really easy on my wrist and just do a little bit out of time so the yarn that I'm using, I had never used it before. This is Shepherd's Wool Worsted in the color Granite. And this is a pretty affordable yarn, I would say. I mean, that's how much I paid. And I ended up getting, I want to say like eight balls or hanks. Um, it's a really beautiful wool. I'm loving it so far. Like it is just beautiful. 
it's just very like lightweight and I love it so far. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I actually bought some more of that yarn in a different color for something else. Um, obviously I haven't like washed it or wore it or anything, so I can't like necessarily recommend it yet, but I love it so far. I, I just love the look of it, the feel of it. It's beautiful. So now I'm kind of wanting to work on this. Maybe I'll work on it today. <laughs> Does that happen to you guys when you don't work on something for a while and then you start talking about it and you're like, oh, I love this so much. Okay, so I can't wait to have that done. It's going to be a very long time coming though. Next, I have another cast on. I think this is my last one. This is a blanket for the baby that I'm really excited about. So this is what I have so far. I love it. Super cute. I haven't worked on it in a while. I was doing so good. I was working on it every single day and then I stopped. This is the Chevron Baby Blanket by Espastrico. And I am using the recommended yarn, which I don't remember what it's called. I'm trying to find the tags here somewhere. Are they in here? Where are the tags? Here they are. So the yarn is organic worsted cotton by Blue Sky Fibers. And it's a total of five colors, so it was a little pricey, but I really see this like as an heirloom blanket, something very special. And I wanted it to be cotton because I want to easily throw it in the wash. I'm sure it's gonna get very dirty. And I just wanted something durable and that can get dirty and that'll just last a really long time. So I, I decided to invest in this yarn and I will share the color names if I remember which is which. Okay, so no, I don't remember which is which. I will link the project page down below and you could check the, the names of them because they are listed in the project page and if you click on the color it'll show you like a visual of the color but these are the colors here Let's see if I can show you guys so there's like this light blue one and then this like ivory colored one those are coming up pretty true to color I love this so I got past the repeats and then I'm starting over again. So this color is the same as this color down here. The pattern does have you kind of go out of order and I think I decided to go in order. So for example, you do like one, two, three, four, five, and then maybe like one, five, three, two. I, I don't remember exactly, but I think I decided to just go in order just to do like maybe two more repeats and be done. So I will say that this yarn doesn't like glide off the needles very easily. So I do feel like it kind of hurts my hands after a while and I could only work on this like a little bit at a, at a time, um, like a few rows at a time. I, I don't know what it is about the cotton just not sliding off the needles, but I do love the color. I want to definitely get it done before he arrives. So I wanted to share this. This is the Sharon Show Shawl from 20... When is it? I don't even remember what year it was. It was last year or the year before, but I had this on the needles for a while. This is actually a shawl. It's like a elongated shawl. And I had just stopped at some point and I wasn't working on it. And I, I just lost interest. So I had decided to just put the seams together. You could probably see the seam here and just stitch them together. So that's what I did. And I ended up making it a cowl. Let's see if I could put it on. definitely doesn't match with what I'm wearing 
Um, I don't have a mirror with me. I could kind of see in the camera. Um, but it looks really cute once I like adjust it and like with the jacket and everything. I love the way it came out. So I'm glad that I turned it into a cowl because it was just sitting on my needles and I just decided to just finish it and just make it a finished object. Yeah, I love it. I love these colors. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head. They are Emma's Yarns and Hallahanks and I will leave everything down below, but I do love this. So another finished object. Next, I wanted to share some haul and I do have quite a bit, I feel like, and I've just kind of collected it over the months. So this is Forest Fiber Arts in Garden Party. This is fingering weight, 8024 ply. I have nowhere to put these, okay. Then I have Long Dog Yarn Sock Set. It's 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon. The colorway is Pinky Swear. I love this so much. This is another one by Long Dog Yarn, another sock set in Dark Dimension. This is so cool. Let me see. This one is by So Livy Dyes Yarn. I love this color. As soon as she posted a picture of this, I knew I needed this color. She um, put up her first pattern a few months ago and she used this colorway. The pattern is beautiful. I'll link it down below. Definitely go check it out. Um, but this is the color Purple Heather and I love it. It's so pretty. Emma's Yarn Hella Hank. This is um, an 80-10-10. So superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon, 600 yards in the color Orbit. I've made things with this colorway. I love this colorway, so I wanted to get it in fingering weight. I don't have any plans for it yet, but I knew that I loved this color. And I believe the rest of these, besides one, which I'll talk about in a second, the rest of these are from my Harry Potter club with Amanda Knits, and this is the rest of them. They're so beautiful. Okay, let me share with you guys. I don't remember what month I got each one in, but I will share all four of them. So this is Chinese Fireball. Peruvian Viper Tooth. Isn't that awesome? Um, I don't know how to pronounce this one. I'll just show it. And another one I don't know how to pronounce, so I'll just show this one too. So those were the remaining yarns from the Harry Potter Club, which... I freaking love I that was such a great club because I got like so many little freebies also like I would always get like teas and stickers and um, like charms all the stuff I it, it was awesome if she does another club I'll let you guys know um, as of now I haven't seen anything but again I'll let you guys know in the future and then last is Brooklyn Tweed loft this I was waiting for for over six months maybe. I think there was like a COVID shortage or something was happening. This was back ordered for a very long time. This is um, Brooklyn, Twe Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the color postcard. This is so lightweight. I've never used Brooklyn Tweed before. I've heard a lot about it. It's definitely scratchy. So I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm willing to give it a shot because I've heard so many good things about it. So, I ended up ordering a sweaters quantity. I I feel like I had a plan for this and it's probably on my Ravelry queue, but I just don't remember off the top of my head what it is. 
um, but I do love this colorway. I feel like the camera doesn't do it justice. It has so much character. Again, my only worry is like the feel of it. I feel like I wouldn't want that on my skin. So I'm not sure, but I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a try. Okay, the lighting probably looks a little different because my husband got home and then I went to go eat lunch and then I'm back <laughs> and I'm out of breath. Sorry, my life. Okay, so first off, I think I'm done talking about like all the crafts and stuff. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the personal stuff, the pregnancy, the move, things like that. So first I'm gonna go ahead and share my bump just so I can kind of look back at this. I'll be 21 weeks tomorrow. I probably have to move this chair though. That's it from the front. He's definitely growing, I would say. It's definitely getting pretty hard. Okay, so last week we had an anatomy scan and I love ultrasounds. I love seeing him and hearing him, like hearing his heartbeat. Um, but last week was like the anatomy scan. So it was like a long ultrasound and it was so great. He had the hiccups, which was really cute. And then he yawned, which, I just loved seeing. And then let me share with you like his little profile picture. So that's been really great. And then here is his name, Milo Julian. And we use this for the announcement a few days ago. And I think I'm gonna take this to the hospital too. Take some pictures there. And then we have been buying him a lot. I mean, not a ton, but we've been buying a good amount of stuff for him. A lot of things have been given to us, which is great. Um, but I wanted to share this one thing we bought for him because it's super cute. It's this hand knit doll from the company Cuddle in Kind, and I'll link them down below. This is their, uh, I think it's called Noah the Dog. And this is the regular size. They have like a regular size and a mini size. So I got the regular size and it's just beautiful quality, just hand knit little dog. And they have a whole bunch of different animals. I actually just got the mini koala. It hasn't arrived yet, but I'm hoping that this will be like an heirloom little dog for him. So we're definitely a dog family. We have two dogs. We love dogs. So we thought it would be fitting to get him his own little dog. So other than that, let's talk a little bit about symptoms and I will be very honest. I don't know if you could tell, but I am struggling right now. I am extremely congested and it has been one of the worst symptoms I would say overall. It has started like early on. That was actually one of like the first symptoms that I had and I didn't really realize that that's what it was. I thought it was just like seasonal allergies, but... I'm like so congested that it just makes me so out of breath and I'm sure you can hear it. And then because I'm I'm so congested and my ears get like plugged and then I could hear myself like echoing. So I'm really uncomfortable right now. Like I'm trying to have this like conversation with you guys and I can't like really focus because my ear is just like plugged. Kind of like when you go up a mountain and your ears get plugged and you want to like yawn or chew gum or something to like pop your ear. It's like that, except I can't pop my ear. So I just hear myself like echo as I speak and it's really frustrating and there's nothing I could really do about it. Um, so the congestion has been one of the worst things. I wake up multiple times a night with the congestion and just like the sinuses and everything that comes along with it. The other thing that has been um, really rough is the thirst. Like I'm just constantly so thirsty. It does not matter how much water I drink. I drink a minimum of 150 ounces and I have added daily electrolytes. It doesn't help. Like I'm just so thirsty to the point where I thought at some point that maybe I had gestational diabetes, but I don't, which is good. I got tested for it. And there's really nothing else that can be done. The doctor just said, drink more water. And I try, I mean, the other day I did like 190, but it's just, it doesn't seem to help. Like I still wake up multiple times and I'm just so thirsty and I feel so dehydrated all the time. 
um, the first trimester, honestly, I thought that I had got lucky and I was like, oh, I don't really have, I'm not experiencing many symptoms. Um, and then week eight hit and that's when the extreme fatigue hit and the nausea and all of that stuff. So that was really rough. That lasted about two months until like week 16 or so. Um, but that whole first trimester, I was not drinking coffee. Wait, I was drinking coffee, but it was decaf. I was not drinking like caffeine. I said that's so weird. I was not drinking caffeine except for like the occasional Starbucks. Like I really like the matcha green tea latte. Um, so I would occasionally have that, but I really cut out a lot of caffeine the first trimester. Um, and now in the second trimester, I have been having a small cup of coffee every morning, but surprisingly it has to be iced coffee only. I do not want hot coffee. And I think that just has to do with the fact that I'm just so thirsty all the time that the last thing I actually want is like hot drink. So I've been having iced coffee in the mornings, which have been great. My fatigue and nausea have subsided a lot in the second trimester. I'm feeling a lot better, but I still don't have like a ton of energy or desire to do things. Like lack of motivation is definitely a thing right now. And I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Um, and I feel like maybe part of it is just a little bit of like stress because we're moving soon and it's been difficult to like pack things because I can't lift a lot of heavy things and it's just kind of frustrating because I want to get stuff done and then I can't really do it and then that's frustrating. So I think it's just a combination of everything but overall I'm like I can't complain about my symptoms like I don't like to complain about them because I am like I'll do it a million times because it's so worth it and um people have it a lot worse so I can't, I don't like to complain about it really. So I am just so grateful and excited to meet him and for him to be here. And I'm just trying to get things kind of prepared because I don't even know exactly where we will be when he's born. I have no, like I have no idea where I'm gonna give birth. I'm thinking Arizona, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Like it's kind of all up in the air and that's stressful because I like to plan and in the military, you can't really plan. So that's something that I'm kind of struggling with. But other than that, you know, I try to remind myself that things happen for a reason and things will fall into place. And I'm just really happy to be growing a little human inside of me. And it just has been like the joy lately for the past several months. It's like all we talk about, all we think about. Um, and so it's been it's been really great. The one thing I will say that I'm waiting for is like that pregnancy glow that people talk about because that's definitely not happening and I'm waiting for it. In fact, like the opposite has happened. I have been struggling with like hormonal breakouts and stuff, so that has not been fun. But again, hopefully things get better um and it'll it'll all be worth it. So I think that's all I really have to share. There are so many other like little symptoms. I feel like every week there's something new going on. And I do have an app where I kind of track things. And my friend Cassie also bought me a book that I like to like um, document stuff in there, like my symptoms and first ultrasound and all of those things are documented in there. So that's been really great. Um, but I don't wanna go over all of that on here because it would take forever. There's so many little things. All I will say is that I never knew it was so difficult <laughs> to grow a human. I always knew like, oh, you're tired. Oh, you get morning sickness. Oh, you know, you get really tired like toward the end when you have like a really big belly. But there's so many more things that they do not tell you just that just blows my mind. I'm just constantly learning new things. I miss having hot dogs and sandwiches and um, just like over easy eggs. All the things that I can't have, I suddenly miss. So that's that's been interesting. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm doing great. I'm happy. We're all very excited and 
I will definitely be keeping you guys up to date for those of you who are interested interested at the end of my podcast I'll probably just share a little bit of like pregnancy update for those of you who um, would like to stick around but I will be sharing a little bit on my Instagram page as well so if you want to stay up to date then make sure to follow me over on Instagram and thank you guys for being patient with me if you've made it all this way I will talk to you guys very very soon and i hope you guys all have a great weekend bye guys